Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me, hello, podcast land. Hello, guys. How are we doing today? What is up in your lives? We are live, live, live. I just love saying that, live, live, live. But we are live. We are here, and I'm going to do some stuff while I'm on the show with you with my Android. I'm going to check some statistics, do a few extra things, because you know how I like doing it here on the show. I like to make sure that we are doing what we need to do for God. And by checking statistics and stuff, it lets you know how we're doing. So, let's turn on my Android. No new news yet about <clears throat> why it's not packaging uh, my app right into the uh, Chrome Web Extension type thing. I don't know why it's not. So I got to figure out how to code in web extensions, maybe. I don't know. Oops, I am so sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on. So I just know that it does not work at the moment. It ain't unpackaging as a Chrome extension like I wanted it to. But with all that being said, we are going to see what's going on with the show and with the app and all that fun stuff, just to see what's hanging around. And since I'm going to look at the uh, statistics for the app anyways, I must use the Android to see the show statistics. I mean, for me, it's just easier since it's the same thing. Statistics. Let's see. Okay, for some reason, it's not loading up statistics right. <clears throat> I'm not sure why it's not doing it. It usually does no matter what. Okay, let me go into App Info for just a second. Or stop that baby. Now we should go back into it. It should work just fine. What happened here? So let's try this again. Not sure why. It should have loaded up just fine, but it's not. That is weird. So let's try this. Let's go into settings. Let's go into <coughs> plans and subscriptions. There's a walk around to this. Okay, don't even have plans or subscriptions. Let's see what this does. Okay, in order for us to do this right now, we have to so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make this easier because it ain't working on here right now. I don't know why. We'll make this easier. We'll search it on the internet. <clears throat> okay. 
Here we go. There we go. There we go. Now we just got to go into login. Right to the three lines. Sign in. There we go. We're good to go. We just do this with my Facebook like normal. It's not that hard. Okay, now that we're in, now we can go into. <clears throat> Let's go plans and pricing for a minute. This will take me to sort of where I need to be. Then we click here. Okay, manage your podcast. There we go. That's what we need. Manage your podcast. So we're going to see what statistics are doing. And here we go. Statistics. See more. Finally, we get somewhere. 188 in the last 30 days. Two live plays. The current week we have 15 in one live play. That makes it 16 downloads. And last week, was, well, first off, we don't want to do last week just yet. We want to do geolocation. Show you guys where our geolocation is this week. One, two, three, four, five countries. United States, India, Germany, Pakistan, and South, and South Africa. And our sources are as follows. <clears throat> Apple Podcast, JL Salvin, Amazon Music, Spreaker, Twitter, VLC, and Chromecast. People listen to us on our Chromecast. And four, uh, four from Apple Podcast and three from JL Salvin. And our devices are as follows. Phone, TV, and other. Someone listens to us on our TV set now. On their TV set. We are on iOS, Android, F-U-C-H-S-I-A and other. F-U-C-H-S-I-A, what is that? Define. Let's see what that says. A Fashusha operating system. It's an operating system of sorts. Operating system developed by Google in contest to Google's Linux-based operating system as Chrome OS. So, hey, it's a wonderful thing. That's what's happening here. So we got stuff going on and everything is just phenomenal. How can you get any better than what you got? You can't. So that's good. Now we got to check into our specific uh, our app now. See what's going on with the app. <coughs> I went back to Spreaker for a minute because I like logging out. Because Dr. Scott's on the other end. And on the other end, he does what he does. So let's check the app statistics. Here we go. <clears throat> and we've got six devices and one uninstalls in the last seven days. So we're we're up to we're six devices. That's not bad. We had three crashes. Wow. And this app doesn't have any ratings yet. So they haven't rated or reviewed. Nothing yet. But hey, we, we're doing we're not doing too bad. We had we have six people who use the app. So we're we're not too god awful. Let's log into the app and let's see what's going on with the app. See if there's a chance that anyone is chatting on the app. So... Let's see who's all checking out the app, if there's any chatters yet. Ooh, I got something going on here. 
one chat there's a message going on with who all notifications level up by when you have reached yeah it's something that fantastic we just get rid of that for right now so <clears throat> No one's chatting just yet, but they will eventually. I guarantee you one of these days they will. It's just a lot of people don't know who I am per se. And being that they don't know who I am 100% yet. They, uh, it's just, it's just more of a trust thing. They don't know exactly who I am just yet. So with them not knowing exactly who I am just yet, they're not chatting on there because of, just because. So, how are you all doing today? What is up in your lives? We are here. We are live, live, live on the show. So let's do this. Let me do this. So let's do this. Let's get into a few, but brief. Announcements starting with number one. You can always go to commuters be called two 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 at gmail dot com spelled C O M M U N I T Y C L O U D two 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 at G M A I L dot C O M. <clears throat> and guess what you can do right there? You can send me all of your prayer requests. Even if you want to shout out to you on the podcast, send your first name, your city, and your state, and I'll shout out to you on T G I F where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, be aware, guys, you can call us here at 1-302-448-8443. Again, that's 1-302-448-TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, guys, be vitally aware that we, in the first Wednesday of September, will be starting outside the classroom Wednesdays all over again with our new host, our new host of the show, Dr. Scott Mullen from Agape Worldwide Ministries, Evangel Christian Churches, and the IAC, in which I am a part of and the wife will be a part of as well soon. So I look forward to Dr. Scott's new show, Outside of Classroom Wednesdays, on TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, guys, also be aware we're doing it again right now. This week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. We just take Pastor Lance and Ernest Travis's message to outside the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. So take the take your time and enjoy the message from to, from Pastor Lance's uh, Sunday service this week. We'll be replaying that right now, and we're gonna have a good time doing so. So with that being said, that's Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. Also, guys, luck forward to next week's episode of of um i'm losing train of thought worship saturdays where we do nothing but praise prayer and worship just grab your favorite drink relax in your lounge chair and enjoy the fabulous music we here have on the show that's it just praise prayer and worship is all we do also guys it's not happening right this instant but it will soon the rumble so look forward to that soon, which is not yet because, because we're getting situated for the new Outside the Classroom Wednesdays, and yeah, it's a little bit of a hassle to, to have to do that plus that and everything else. But it will be happening real, real soon, so look forward to that, and it's just going to be a true blessing what's happening on the new Outside of the class of the new uh, outside of classroom Wednesdays. So with that being said, guys, with that being said, I just clicked on something on my computer. I don't even know how to get out of now. I'm going to just go right to where I clicked it. And it doesn't do it. OK, we got to hit quit. There we go. It's gone. There we go. I'm still getting used to my computer. So that is. uh Going to be the Rumble soon, but not yet. We're still working on the new Outside the Classroom Wednesday's host. He's got some great messages coming forth for that as well. Also, guys, I want you to be vitally aware. You can download that app. 
It's called Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L. Available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. Here's what you do. You download up from the Amazon, the Android, the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market Podcast Portal. What can you do on the app? You can listen to the show. You can make comments with a free Spreaker.com account right straight from the show. You can even, you can even like, comment, and download every single episode straight from the app. Not only that, you can connect with us through Facebook, Twitter, and email. Yes, email. Here's a patented TGIF life hack. Say you want to send an email to TGIF, but you don't want to go spell C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D-222 at G-M-A-I-L dot C-O-M. See how much of a breath it takes to get it out of there? Just go to the to the Play Store, the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Android Market, download Podcast Portal. Again, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L. Download the app. Go to the bottom right-hand corner of any single page and click on the email button. Looks like an envelope. Click on the email button. And you're instantly sending an email straight to the show. And you never, ever, ever have to, ever have to again. Uh... You never, ever, ever have to again type in an email address. Just hit the button once. So here's what you do. You click on the button. You click on your email client. You then click always. You then type in your email and then you hit send. Seems like a lot. It seems like a lot more, five things, a lot more than what you just type in the email address, type in your email, hit send, you're fine. But when you hit that always button, guess what happens? Next time you click on that button, it takes you straight to the email that fast, that quick, and you're done. Just click the button, type in your email, and you're finished. Hit send. It's that easy. Also, guys, you can DM DM me on Twitter as well, and straight from the app, and you can even message us through the Facebook Messenger on the app, and you can even... Call us right straight from the app. Never, ever, ever again have to type in a telephone number. Just go to the podcast portal app. Go to the very second page. You can either click left to right. No, right to left or left to right. So click right to left to take you there. You can click right to left and scroll through all the pages. Or just click left to right. Just slide your finger left to right. You got your podcast at the top. You got your Facebook next, your Twitter next, your play buttons next, and then your portal chat next. So just left to right or right to left, but left to right is what I'm going to do for right now. Click on the Facebook page, and you can right next to it, the top where it says message, just click on that button. It takes you straight to your phone dialer, and you're that quick calling me straight from TGIF, straight from the app to your phone, and you're calling me. If you ever need a question, a prayer, or whatever the case is, Also, guys, you can view the blog we got going on straight from the show. I got to update that tonight. I tried doing that yesterday, but the the, uh, transcripts were not showing up just yet. Once in a while, I have to to select uh, a video language for transcripts to show up. So once in a while, it doesn't exactly show up per se. But it should be there today. I'll update that tonight before I go to bed. And hey... You can view all the blogs, we, the blog postings we got going on. There's a lot of stuff you can do. I might send you, I might uh, post a picture to the the Facebook page or whatnot. You know, maybe I'll show my setup on the show. Send a, a picture once I get my room set up and all that fun stuff. Show what's like going on. Because we have a ball here at the show. And I want to show you a little bit of behind the scenes deal. So with that being said, what else can you do on the app? You can listen to the four play buttons. 95 Fight the Fish from Cleveland, Ohio, KJIC out of Texas, and my former church, Evangel Christian Churches. And so what you do is, and my other former church, uh, a Porch Community Chapel. So you go to the first two pages, 95 Fight the Fish from Cleveland, Ohio, and KJIC out of Texas. Click on their buttons, and they play the radio stations. But Evangel, you click on the Evangel button, says Evangel right on there. Click on that, it takes you to the YouTube page. And that then when you touch a video, it plays their videos. You can see and hear them. With Portage Community Chapel as well, 
Just click on their portage button. Looks like an abstract button. I got the picture ready for it, but I got to figure out why the picture is not showing up uh, in the app. I got the picture ready and made properly, but it's not really showing up in the app. But click on their abstract blues, yellow, greens button. It looks like an abstract painting. Click on that. Click on their, one of their videos that doesn't say upcoming. Click the play button, and you're playing instantly their messages. You used to be able to do Google search results at the bottom, bottom of the play buttons page, but now you cannot. But... To suffice with that, go to the bottom of the Facebook or the bottom of the Twitter page, and you can do a Google search result right straight from there as well. So with that being said, there's a lot of stuff you can do on this app, but my favorite of all parts is the portal chat feature, where you can communicate with everyone who owns the app. All you got to do is just download Podcast Portal, just go to the very last of the page. You can either go right to left to get there, or scroll your finger from left to right. Click the bottom picture. Looks like a computer keyboard. Click on that. Takes you straight to Portal Chat, and you can instantly chat with whoever owns the app. And you don't even have to have login information to do so. So you can say your name is Susie Smith for all we care. And if your name is Susie, you can say my name is Susie, and you can type in Susie, and you're done. You don't have to have Susie at gmail.com. Password is one two three four five six seven eight. You don't have to have none of that. You could just say Susie, hit continue. But if you so choose to and want to get an account to send pictures and stuff like that, then feel free to. But on the free account, you do not have. To, well, it's all free no matter what. But on the non-login account where you have a password and stuff, you don't. You can't send pictures. You can't do none of that. But if you were to do it where you have an account login like pass, username and password then you can send pictures and all this fun stuff so if you're part of france want to show us the Eiffel tower go ahead and do so we'd love to see it with that being said you can even private message people straight from the app be careful though not everyone who claims to be christian is that's just all i have to say right now just because they say so doesn't mean they actually are I mean, I'm not going to say who is and who isn't, but from what I know, just because they say so doesn't mean they are. So with that being said, guys, just be careful and be safe out there. And if anything goes wrong, you come to me and you let me know and then I'll do my, hey, look, you can't do this here. Um, This is your warning. You do it again. I'm going to ban you for a week. You do it again. I ban you indefinite. That's it. Warning, ban for a week and ban them for good. That's the rules. And that's what we got to follow by because it's a safe place. It's a safe place to express yourself, express your feelings, let people know how you're feeling, how you're doing, things like that. It's not a place to it's not a place to hook up. It's not a place to show off your bod or whatever you want to do. It's not a place for all that. A place for all that is on the internet somewhere where I don't even want to know where to tell you it's at because it's not Christian like. And we don't want that in something that we're trying to honor God with. So leave that, check that at the splash screen. That's going to be my new favorite thing. Check that at the splash screen. There's an old saying that used to say, check that at the door. Well, check that at the splash screen. (laughs) Or leave that attitude at home. Or leave that attitude with the devil where he needs to have it and not not with you. So with that being said, <clears throat> that was Podcast Portal. And one last thing I want to say is ask your Alexa device, say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal, where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. We also got this skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our announcements for today. Let's get into our first song, our main song of the show. <clears throat> then we'll get into our message with Pastor Lance and Ernesto Travis. <clears throat> I am so sorry. <clears throat> our first song is It's You by None Other Than Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. Enjoy, it's you. Thank you. 
Same old sunshine, same old sky, same old bluebirds flying by. But it seems like the sun shines more beautiful today. It's not the change. In the weather, but the fact that we're together, it's you, it's you. that brings light into my life. It's you, it's you that makes my future bright. Whether it's morning, noon, or night, Lord. Same old, same old, same old town. Same old people, just walking around. But I'm seeing the world in a different light tonight. Not the stars nor the moon can't be anything but you. That brings light into my life. It's you, It's you that makes my future bright. Whether it's morning, noon, or night, Lord, it's you. There may be cloudy days and those rainy nights. Without a single star in the sky, but if the sun and the moon should both refuse to shine, I don't mind. It's you, It's you. that brings light into my life. That makes my future bright. Whether it's morning, noon, or night, Lord, it's you. It's you. There you go, guys. That was it. You by none other than my friend for over 16 years, Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. Let's get into Pastor Lance and Ernesto Travis's message on this week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. Enjoy the message. And I just wonder, is there anybody besides me that needed that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I just wanted to say this too, and um, I'm praying that I I'm able to get to uh, the message because uh, it certainly is not uh, my intention. And once again, I'm going to present my plans to God. Uh, I've learned how to make him laugh. Um, but my intention is not to be alone before you. Not as short as this morning, <laughs> but, but not long at all. Um, and you know what? I thank God so much. Uh, God is so wise. He's all wise. 
Because even as the service was going on this morning, the Holy Spirit just kept speaking to me and saying, just trust me, trust me in this. I said, okay. Uh, and not only did I know as I wound up saying that it doesn't take him long at all to do what he has to do and say what he has to say, but I did not know that God was going to uh, quicken you and you'd get up and give the word that you did to me and my wife. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, oftentimes, there's really a learning lesson for all of us. And it doesn't matter how long you've been around and how much you think you know, there's always a learning opportunity. And it was for me this morning. Um, because once again, um, there are things that God wants to give us, wants to impart, wants to deposit, and we're looking to give, we're looking to minister. You know, yeah, I had my little message, but he said, I got something for you this time. <laughs> Glory to God, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to flip the script a little bit. I got something for you, because you need some more. Yeah, glory to God. Yeah, that's right. God speaks like that too. You need some more, not more, some more for when you're getting ready to go. You need some more. See, we think we got enough and all that it takes right now. No, you got all of who it takes, but that don't mean you got all of what it takes. Yeah, glory to God. You got Jesus. You got all of who it takes. But uh, trust me, you need some more for the journey. I, I want to say this to you, having said that, because this is what the message is going to be about as well. Um, that God wants you to have so much confidence in him, so much confidence that you'll believe him for absolutely anything. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Crazy stuff. Y'all remember when was it? Last week or the week before last, I was sharing you all um, our testimony, my wife and I, about the house that we just bought. Well, God did the rest of it. All right. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm believing him. <laughs> Whatever he says, and even the desires of my heart. Um, I was sharing with uh, uh, the brothers how that, you know, through the negotiations of the house and all that, long story short, uh, the seller of the house took all of the uh, appliances out of the house, uh, at least the stove, wash and dryer. So we had a house we just purchased, just closed on, with no stove, no wash and dryer. I'm like, oh my God, how are we going to do this? And uh, showing up because of faith and because we would not let ourselves get down about what happened. Uh, me, my wife, and mama packed up all the clothes and went to the lodge. In faith. In faith. And it wasn't pretty either. It wasn't mama. We had a rough time. We had so many clothes. It was water all over the place. Uh, I'm serious. Uh, something happened with the big giant washer and uh, the clothes was you see, she pointed this way. Y'all saw that? Y'all see, 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 see how slick she did that? She pointed up here. Anyways, the clothes finished washing them, but they were soaking wet. But it was a wonderful experience for me because I found out, I, I've never seen this machine before. It's a machine that they put it in soaking wet and it spins. Centrifuge. And in the centrifuge machine, it made them almost dry. See, what you think is the worst thing <laughs> turns out to be a blessing. <laughs> you know, I had to throw that in there. But, but anyways, uh, long story short, uh, we had that experience because we wasn't going to let that get us down. You know, we had clothes to wash. You know, and you, you, know, you do what you got to do. You keep it moving. And uh, we were at ABC Warehouse, and I applied for um, a credit card. And they turned me down. They said, well, you know, sometimes they'll want to check out your stuff, but, you know, right now we can't help you. I said, oh, all right. He said, the next day, call them and see that. I didn't call them. I just went and, I, you know, um, God's going to make a way. And, uh, you know, I'm looking for money somewhere else. And then <laughs> before that next week was out, I went to the mail, and the same people that denied me the credit card. You heard me? <laughs> Not another application. The credit card was in the mail. And uh, don't you know we went down to ABC Warehouse and picked out a brand spanking new washer and dryer set. And it looks so pretty. We ain't using it yet. It's still put together, but it looks so pretty. Excuse me. It's not a washer and dryer. 
people that deliver say you all don't have washer and dryers, you have tanks. They did say that. They did say that. You don't have a washer and dryer, you have tanks. Yeah, because they 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 pretty big. But uh, I'm I, I'm saying to you how that not only God provides, but why it's so important to consistently trust Him. Because you you might think that it's not going to work, and because in every uh, instance and even the evidence makes it look like it ain't going to work. But if God says it don't work, because the credit card company told me no, period. But then I went to the mail and the card was in there. Uh, so they might say no. They go over to God. Uh, come on, I'm just trying to help somebody's faith. That, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to help your faith. Glory to God. Uh, I told you all the story about the house. You know, we had no idea this man was going to sell the house. And we just got married. And, uh, you know, we wanted two years to work on our credit and put some money away. Yeah. We didn't have a chance to do either one. <laughs> but we owned the house. All right. Hallelujah. And uh, the folk where I come from say, won't they do it? Won't they do it? <laughs> Glory to God. Um, as I'm talking, I want you to turn with me to uh, the Gospel of St. Mark. And this morning we spoke from chapter 10, but uh, this afternoon we're going to speak from chapter 5. St. Mark chapter 5, and I just want to share a little bit with you. Um, as we continue with the thought of resilience, um, did, how many were there this morning? Did you get anything out of the message this morning yeah. about resilience? Uh, I know we had to move kind of quick, but yeah. God wanted to make sure we didn't misunderstand. So he said, I'm going to tell you all this in five minutes. Bam. Uh, so you won't misunderstand. Uh, he's making us resilient. Yeah. There's a lot of folk, especially after uh, the pandemic and COVID and all that, a lot of folk are not here today. And uh, some are not here because they didn't live to see the day. But there were other folk who said, you know what, I quit, I give up. I ain't going to church no more. I know. But y'all are here. Y'all went through the same pandemic and you were here. Uh, to me, that speaks of resilience. Yeah, I, I know you might be hurt. You might want be going through things, changes, sickness, uh, you know, uh, funny money, all that stuff. You know, pressure on your marriage. But you're here. I remember a song years ago that I loved that really misses me that says that they say I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I never. Y'all remember that song? They said I never amount to anything, but I'm on my way. Uh, just to say, let you know that I ain't going nowhere. And uh, the, the just the song was I'm still here holding on to God's hand. I'm still here. I've been through some stuff in my life, but I'm still here. Come on, can you look at somebody and say, I'm still here? Come on, tell them, I've been through some stuff, but I'm still here. Glory to God. Sickness, life support, divorce, homelessness, walking on the bus, amen, thrown away, talked about, but I'm still here. A lot of folk didn't make it, but I'm still here. Yeah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I want to say this too as we go into the message that I really want to encourage you uh, to not only continue to trust God no matter what, but to trust in his love for you. And my wife and I are very, very passionate people about what we do. And, and sometimes, you know, uh, passion can be misconstrued. Uh, as uh, impatient, you know, or forceful, and uh, but yet we are passionate. And the thing that I learned, and I'm continuing to learn and to teach, uh, is that uh, that is why everything you do for God has to be tempered with love. It's got to be in faith, but it's got to definitely have some love in it. And when you think about it, and as the scripture says that, because God is love. Well, if it ain't no love in what you do, then guess what? There ain't no God in what you do. Because God is love. So it's so important. It's important also, and I learned this years ago, when people come into your assembly, you never know what people are coming with or where they came from. You never know what people are going through outside of these walls. And that's why it's so important to love on people. 
You never know. I've had, oh my God, hundreds, thousands of people over the course of 41 years that's come to me and said, you had no idea what I was going through. Uh, you never know what people are going through. But we got to learn to love on them. And I love the saying that I adapted from an apostle, uh, which is why I've learned to love people to life. Uh, Dr. Jerry and Dr. Cheryl Piscopo uh, exemplified that and it demonstrated and administered yes. life to me. Yes. I was in a really bad place when I came to Evangel, but they ministered life to me. They loved me to life. And I just want to be able to give that uh, to, to, to all those that we come in contact with. And uh, I'm, I'm praising the living God uh, for just having a, a family, a wife, uh, and a mother. Because, uh, see, I get to practice uh, loving at home. I get All to right. practice on them, right. uh, to yes. practice on my wife and, and, and mother. And uh, everybody's not going to be agreeable with you while you're loving them. Uh, that's why it's got to be love. It's got to be agape. Because uh, some folk going to make it difficult for you to love them. Praise the living God. Uh, glory to God. But you got to love them anyhow. That's right. See, therefore, because what God is doing is equipping you to demonstrate his love to anybody who comes. Some people are angry and bitter and cantankerous and wicked and evil because they've been abused all their lives. You heard me? Which is to say that, therefore, they need what you got in terms of the love of God. Uh, I grew up in an abusive situation. I, I know what it's like to be hurt uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, and even spiritually have pain. But I can tell you as I stand in you today that I'm healed. Glory to God. I'm, I'm delivered. I'm set free. Thank you, Lord. Uh, because of the love of God uh, that was shown and has continued to be shown to me. All right, let's get into the scripture. And I want to be mindful of the time because once again, I thank God so much for y'all are so amazing. Uh, when I, and I, I'm so serious and I'm so very serious and I'm being transparent. When I look at you guys sitting here today, it makes me get the sense of the apostle Paul when he addressed folk and how that he said, I constantly give my God thanks for you. And I thank God for your faith. And for your love, because when I look at you all and I see you in the morning service, then you turn right around and come back. And I know it's not just because of me, uh, you know, and y'all ain't here just because I have a very white voice. Uh, but <laughs> glory to God. Wow. <laughs> but you're here because of Jesus. You know, I know it ain't because sometimes even that gets old. <laughs> and uh, even with the very white voice, sometimes if you ain't going to have a good day, I wish he would shut up. <laughs> Barry white and all of them. Shut up. <laughs> When you're not feeling it. So it has to be more than that that gets you coming here and keeps you coming. So I'm saying that because of your faith and your love for God, I salute you. I salute you. I praise God for y'all. I really do. And whether you know it or not, because you keep coming, it encourages me to keep preaching, to keep praying, to keep prophesying, to keep ministering, to keep loving, and to keep giving. Amen. Not that uh, I'm going to stop if you don't come, but I'm just saying the show of your faith, the demonstration of your faith is what inspires me and it encourages me. Your love for God is what encourages me. And, and that gives segue to the message today. Uh, and a familiar passage too. Y'all y'all have heard this probably preached a thousand different ways, uh, but I just want to use this passage to encourage your hearts uh, as we talk about uh, with resilience, the thought about resilience. We're going to talk about the place of persistent faith. Uh, and to make it in this day, you need some persistent faith. Listen, and to see the things that God promised you and that were prophesied over your life, you need persistent faith. Inconsistency will not get you to the fulfillment of your promise. Amen. Being consistent and being persistent with your faith is what's going to allow you to see what God said to come to pass. Amen. It's through faith and patience the scripture said that they inherited the promise. Not giving up and quitting. Not being offended. 
Not they get on my nerves. Not I don't like what they said. Because the thing is, in the beginning, it's not even about them. But God does what he does in you uh, because ultimately it's about him and his purpose for your life. But also it's about you and his purpose for his for your life. That makes sense, everybody? <laughs> All right. So Mark chapter 5. We're going to begin uh, reading at verse 24. That's verse 25. And uh, I wanted to go to verse 21, but that... Uh, <laughs> is talking about the, and ends the story of the, uh, Jairus' daughter being raised from the dead, which is an amazing story too. Um, and it connects because it was Jairus' faith that caused uh, her to, uh, get him to get Jesus' attention to raise the girl from the dead. Let's read it. I'm, uh, verse 24. I'm sure. Verse 24. It says, so Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him, pressed against him. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. Anybody heard this story before? And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power or virtue had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, because she knew she wasn't supposed to be touching Jesus' clothes, (laughs) came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Yes, Jesus, it was me. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. I love this story. I love it. I love it so much. One of the things I love so much about this story is because this woman thought that uh, knowing the ceremonial law, that she had no business touching Jesus uh, because she was considered ceremonially unclean. So for her to touch Jesus would have, in the religious leader's eyes, defiled Jesus. But see, they thought that it would have defiled Jesus because they wasn't understanding who Jesus is. Yeah, they thought that he was one of the priests. They thought he was a prophet. They thought he was just a really good man, you know, like uh, the Islamic folk do. They thought Jesus was a good man, but they have no idea that Jesus is the son of the living God. Yeah. They had no idea that Jesus is God incarnate. So therefore, uh, they thought, because they're looking at him through carnal, natural eyes, they thought that uh, Jesus uh, was just one of the good preachers, uh, the Reverend Dr. Jesus. Uh Yeah, but they didn't realize that it was God in the flesh. So when this woman touched him, I'm not a whole And y'all help me. Now pray for me, please, because I get excited when I think about this, that when she touched him, that she touched the one who was coming to be sacrificed for the sins of man. So therefore, if he was coming uh, to glory to God, to give his life so that we can freely receive salvation, cleansing from sin because of his shed blood, and also he purchased our uh, healing as well as our salvation, Salvation, and when his body was bruised, glory to God, that uh, it was bruised uh, with every stripe and every yeah. sickness known to man. Healing was therefore provided. Yeah. So with this Jesus, her touching him, uh, what else she could, could she get but healed? <laughs> See, religiously, I hope y'all really understand what I'm saying. Religiously, they thought he would have been defiled because of the ceremony. But they didn't understand that spiritually, because of who he is, when she touched him, she, well, he didn't become unclean, glory to God, because he was a solution for her sickness. Yeah, God. Thank you. Glory. <laughs> Ooh, is anybody else getting happy about this but me? He was the solution for her sickness. That's why when she touched his garment, glory to God, 
uh, the blood dried up. She had an issue of blood, a flowing of blood. Blood flowed from her body for 12 years. But the Bible said immediately, when she touched the hem of his garment, immediately the blood stopped. Come on, that's why we've got to really uh, speak to your faith, that your faith is strengthened and built up. Because there are some things in your life that God wants to touch and cause them to immediately stop. Come on, that should have made somebody happy. Hallelujah. Because you got some stuff going on right now that's really causing you to lose some sleep. There's some stuff that you're dealing with, hey man, that's causing you to wonder when is it ever going to end. But he said that oh, just like this woman, all I want you to do is just touch me. Hallelujah. He's going to touch you, but he wants you to touch him so that he can immediately stop. Don't you know that you can touch him with your obedience and you can touch him with your faith and you can touch him with your worship. That's why I've learned no matter what's going on in my life, I always got a song on my lips. I always got worship in my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not the best singer. Glory to God. But my wife and mother can tell you that I'm always going through the house singing something. Why? Because it ministers life to me. Glory to God. It causes all Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I've learned to become a worshiper and not a warrior, but to be a worshiping warrior. How many of there's a difference between being a warrior and a warrior? <laughs> yeah, that just seemed like that just resonated with somebody. Amen. But uh, we got to learn how to be warriors. Uh, see, because if you ever watch those old movies like... Uh, uh, what's the name of the movie? 300? <laughs> yes! <laughs> all right. I'm going to move on. I'm not going to tell all your business. But <laughs> Y'all saw how she hollered when I said 300. And you know what that movie is about. <laughs> Chris, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's your favorite, too. All right. Glory to God. Yeah, all right. But anyways, um, <laughs> in that movie, you didn't see men crying about, oh, what are we going to do? There's too many of them. No. Uh -uh. No, that's right. Listen, if it's just me by myself, I'm getting somebody. That's what a warrior does. <laughs> that's, what, that's the mentality of a warrior. Listen, if I go, I ain't going by myself. I'm taking somebody with me. Glory to God. You know, demons ain't going to just come and give my family a hard time and mess with uh, my marriage and mess with our money and upset. But no, listen, I'm getting on my knees or I'm standing on my feet and crying out to God. Some demon is going to die today. Some devil's getting chased out of here. Some unclean spirit's going to get casted out. Amen. Because I'm not taking this lying down. Glory to God. You got to have an attitude in warfare. I I'm going to tell somebody this means war. This means war. All right. The place of persistent faith. Now, I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation. And it says from verse 24, Immediately Jesus went with him, uh, and the huge crowd followed, pressing on him from all sides. Now, in the crowd that day was a woman who had suffered horribly from a continual bleeding for 12 years. She had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors, yet in spite of spending all she had on their treatments. Anybody know about spending your money on doctors? She was getting worse instead of getting better. Now, you, she didn't spend all of her money and was getting worse. When she heard about Jesus' healing power, uh, she pushed through the crowd and came up behind him and touched his, his prayer shawl. Glory to God. Uh, for she kept saying to herself, if I could touch even his clothes. Ooh, come on. That prayer shawl in your house is not just for decorations. I just wanted to throw that in there. Y'all do know that. If you, you, the prayer shawl is not just to have something that look holy and religious and pretty. Amen. Because this woman touched Jesus' prayer shawl and was made whole. Ooh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. And see, because if we stop being so religious and really get all the way in Jesus, everything that we touch becomes anointed. So 
as soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it, for she could feel in her body instantly being healed of her disease. Jesus knew once that someone had touched him, for he felt the power that always surged around him had passed through him to someone to be healed. That's why he asked, who touched me? Yeah, yeah, I know there's people pressing around me, but I want to know who touched me. See, see, because the, the person who touched me was not like the touch of the people pressing around me. But I want to know who touched me because I understand and I sense what touched me. I want to know who touched me because they touched me unlike anybody else. I want to know who touched me because what they touched me with is faith. That's why I'm asking who touched me. And see, the disciples didn't get it because the first thing they asked Jesus, what are you talking about? It's thousands of people and they're pressing against us. You've been touched by 200 people. What do you mean who touched us? You don't understand. I'm asking who touched me because I know what touched me. <laughs> Glory to God. And that person who touched me was not a physical touch. It was a spiritual touch because they touched me with their faith. That's why when she touched this garment, immediately the blood dried up because it was her faith that touched her. Oh, Hallelujah. So his disciples answered, what do you mean who touched you? Now look at the huge crowds. They're all pressing against you. But Jesus' eyes swept across the crowd looking for the one. See, Jesus understood it, and he would look through the crowd and he knew that there were thousands of people there, but he was looking for one person. Did y'all hear me? He knew it was thousands of people, but he was looking for one. Because he knew that everybody around him were not reaching out to him in faith. Just like some folk, they come to church and they come seeking, but not in faith. When they hear good music, they're fine. When they hear a good sermon, that makes them feel real good and excited. They're fine. But Jesus wants somebody that's going to touch him with their faith. Because when you touch it with your faith, everything changes. Oh, I didn't have to holler to say that one. I said, when you touch it with your faith, everything changes. So when the woman who experienced this miracle realized what had happened to her, she came before him, trembling with fear, and threw herself down at his feet because she knew ceremoniously she was in the wrong. See, God, don't you know, will use some stuff that folk will say, what's she doing? Yeah. How's she going up to the front of the church? She know that Dr. Cheryl ain't through preaching yet, and here she come with her bloody self. <laughs> oh, you know people in churches like that? Okay, that's another message. I'm sorry. But anyway, listen, she went up there anyhow. Why? Because she didn't care about what people thought. All she knew is that she had an issue of blood. She spent all of her money and only got worse instead of better. All she knew is I needed to be healed. Sometimes we got to come to church with that attitude, with that kind of faith. All I know is I need deliverance. I don't care what they call out. I don't care what they say about me. I don't care what opinion that they draw. I don't care how they look at me. All I know is that I need to be set free from this thing that's been dogging me and my family and generations for decades. Preach to me. Lay your hands on me. Because all I know is I need to be set free. Hallelujah. You can think what you want to think. All right. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, I'm trying to move on. I really want to close this. But when I said that, it reminds me, and also uh, in the book of Mark, you'll find this, and even in the book of St. Matthew, and along with the same idea of uh, persistent faith and resiliency, there was a Syrophoenician woman who had the daughter that was grievously vexed by the daughter, uh, the, uh, by demons. And then when uh, Jesus came, she went to him and said, Jesus, Master, can you help me? My daughter is grievously vexed with demons and Jesus went and broke down to her his itinerary and what he was there for because he said that I've come only for the lost uh, sheep of the house of Israel I maybe can get you on the way back but listen I come here for Israel and everything else is secondary I want you to understand daughter that's not what I'm here for you stick around maybe I can help you later but see this woman has I really hope you
y'all are getting this in your spirit, man. This woman had faith, and she had it to the degree. Well, I'm just turning on the microphone, but anyway, glory to God. She had faith to the degree where she said, true, Jesus, I know uh, you came for Israel, but just help me. And you know what Jesus said? The Bible said that he answered her not a word. But see, if Jesus come to us, or we come to church, and we ask a question, somebody gonna say them, we ready to get a pistol, we gonna cut, we gonna cuss, because we gotta ignore it. But the Bible said, Jesus didn't answer a word. She said, okay. So she began to worship it. Come on, Dad, read it, read it. She began to worship him. This woman had so much faith, she understood that there were certain things Jesus couldn't ignore. Are y'all get this? These are the things that helps to build up your faith. Understand it. There are certain things that God will not ignore. So even though she came asking questions, she had a need, he didn't say anything, but once she began to worship him, he said, oh, wait a minute. What is this? He couldn't resist. She got his attention when she began to worship. And, it's, and then uh, Jesus said to her, and I, I know Jesus is not a mean person. Uh, he was not trying to beat up on the woman, but he knew that this woman had faith. So he tested her faith. Why did he test her faith? So her faith could be even stronger. Because yeah. see, the daughter wasn't there, but she came in proxy for her daughter. Right. She wanted that daughter whole. So whatever she had to go through, she was going to go through it to get her daughter whole. So listen, when she worshipped him, Jesus turned. He said, oh, man, well, I'm in a situation right now. He said that, uh, he said, you know, that it's not me appropriate to get the children's bread to dogs. What? Now, first of all, he ignored her. Mm. And then he turned around and told her it's not appropriate to give the children's bread to dogs. Anybody remember this story from the Bible? Yeah. 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 And so Jesus, uh, he told her this. Mm. That was another uh, opportunity for her to really get deep in her feelings. Uh -huh. All right. Because first you ignored me, and now you're calling me a dog. <laughs> what the? What? <laughs> you ignored me, then you call me a dog? But you know what this woman did? She was operating in faith. Yeah. Where she wouldn't even let her feelings get hurt. She Ooh. wouldn't get offended because she had such a need. Yeah. All she cared about was her daughter getting delivered. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go through whatever I got to go through to get whatever it is I need from God. And I'm closing with this. But listen, this woman, when he said that it's not meat, it's not appropriate to give children's bread to dog, you know what her response was? Not, oh, now you're calling me a dog. No, 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 no. But her response word was truth, Lord. Yeah, you're right. But she said, even the dogs eat the mouth. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She was still What she was saying to Jesus, in essence, is that I don't care what you say. I know what you got, and I know what I need. I know that you got exactly what I need. You can call me what you want to call me. Just get my daughter delivered. You can call me whatever you want to. Just heal me. So she said, true, Lord, you are right. Just get out the alpo, get the gravy train, and feed your dog. You know what Jesus said to her? He said, woman, great is your faith. I have never seen such faith in all of Israel. <laughs> what a faith story. I have never seen such faith in all of Israel. And the Bible said from that very same hour, her daughter was delivered. Thank you, Lord. But you understand what I'm saying about persistent faith? You can't have persistent faith and be caught up in your emotions. And I'm saying this because the same thing applies to me. There's some stuff that I go through or that, that comes against me. That really gets me in my feelings. But I'm so glad for the Holy Ghost that constantly speaks to me. That speaks to my spirit, man. Just hold on. I got this. I'm going to take care of this. Just hold on. 
because I'm using this to make you better. Right. Just hold on, trust me, just like this morning. When, you know, when I knew what was going on and I knew time was passing. I was like, Lord Jesus, what's going on here? They got to come over the service. You know, I got to get down and preach it. And he said, God said, just trust me. <laughs> Listen, yeah, yeah. my wife laughed because she said, I'm just really being honest. I'm really being transparent. Little did I know that God had a word that was going to blow us away. Persistent faith. This passage relates to the account of a desperate woman whose healing was a result of great and persistent faith. Her illness made her ceremonial unclean, as we were saying earlier, and disqualified her from mixing with crowds. Did y'all hear that? So this woman had so many things against her. She was not only considered to be ceremonially unclean, but it disqualified her where she was supposed to also stay quarantined and not come out and mix with crowds. But guess what she was? Right in the middle of the crowd. <laughs> Not mixing with crowd of people. Yet she was certain that if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. She wasn't outside saying, I can't stay in this house. I got to be here with the people and enjoy myself too. And that. No, it wasn't about having a good time. But it was about if I only touch his clothes, I'm going to be made whole. If I can just touch Jesus with my faith. And guess what? Jesus did not rebuke her. He knew that ceremonially she was in the wrong. But he didn't even care about the ceremony because what he saw was her faith. And I'm trying to tell you, the reason I talk about emotions, I'm not putting picking on anybody. I'm just saying that your emotions don't move God. Your faith moves God. God responds to your faith. You can cry all but if you don't believe, it ain't gonna change. No, true. Come on in. But if you cry and believe, glory to God, you'll get an outlet, a breakthrough. You'll hear from God. Not only will it change, but you will change too. Just throw that throw it in there too. So listen, Jesus didn't rebuke her, but delayed his mission to the home of Jairus, of the young lady that he raised from the dead. She was 12 years old. Uh, from, from the home of Jairus, whose daughter was dying in order to assure her of healing and salvation. Say Jesus was on a mission. Jesus later raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, but here he took time to minister to one with positive faith. That such persistence is rewarded is not to suggest that uh, healing or any other work of God is earned by human effort. You see, she wasn't healed, glory to God, just because she kept going and was persistent. No, she was healed because she kept going and was persistent, believing what he said. Amen. Believing on who he is. Believing in what he can do. Amen. She pressed her way because she was believing. Anybody remember Hebrews 11, 6? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And all those that come to him must what? Believe. believe. Yeah. Come on, look at somebody telling them, you yeah. got to believe. believe. It don't work unless you believe. Yeah. You come to God, you must believe. Yeah. That God is. That God exists. Yeah. And that he's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Yes, it rather illustrates the need to be bold in what we believe. Stop being weak, tempted, weak, wimpy, moved by situations, circumstances. Amen. But it, this rather illustrates the need to be bold in what we believe. To not be deterred by circumstance or discouraged by others. All things are possible to him or her who believes. And they all are by God's grace. What are you believing God for today? What are you trusting God for? 
you know, I tell our little story, my wife and I, uh, not to brag about uh, stuff that we got because according to the word of the Lord today, uh, that confirms what's been spoken to us over and over and over again, glory to God, uh, that yeah, God's doing some things right now, but what he's doing right now is nothing compared to what he's going to do for me and my baby. All right. All right, glory be to God. my soul. It's nothing compared to what God's going to do. And I'm saying that to say to you, what God is doing in your life is nothing compared to what he's going to do. Chris and Kanisha, y'all hear me? Because <laughs> some good stuff is happening in your family right now. But what's happening right now ain't nothing compared to what he's getting ready to do. Oh my God. Hallelujah. It don't even compare. What did the Bible say? Uh, Ayama, he said that eyes have not seen, neither have ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has promised to those that love him. And as we say, God is about to blow your mind. Hallelujah. Because see, what's in what he does is who he is. And see, let's see if anything that helps build our faith. Sometimes we look at what he does and we look at the stuff. <laughs> and that's what we rejoice in, the stuff. And that's what we put our faith in, the stuff. But listen, the stuff is going to rust. The stuff is going to break. The stuff is going to wear out. The stuff will get stolen. The stuff will disappear. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Ooh, but when you look at how he puts who he is and what he does... Who he is can never be stolen. Who he is is not going to rust out. What are you saying, Pastor? Come on, tell us what you're really trying to say. What I'm really trying to say is that I'm not looking at the stuff. I'm looking at the provider. I'm not looking at the gifts. I'm looking at the giver of the gifts. You understand? As long as I consistently put my faith in the giver of the gifts, I never have to worry about the gifts. As long as I consistently put my faith in Jehovah Jireh, my provider, then I never have to worry about my needs getting met. But if my faith is in what he does, sooner or later it's going to wear out. That's why I believe. I believe that he'll do what he says because I believe in who he is. Not only is he my provider, but he's faithful. Yeah. Is there anybody in here besides me that knows God is faithful? Amen. God is faithful. He won't, he will never forget what he promised you. He will never forget what he said he's going to do for you. I know the waiting period is rough. I know the waiting period has lots of pressure. I know. And you keep praying, and you keep going, and you keep giving of yourself, and you keep serving, and you keep sacrificing. Well, guess what? While you're doing all of that, you're building seed up, you're continuing to plant seed, you're continuing to give, you're continuing to sow, and when your harvest comes, woo-wee, glory to God. When your harvest comes, glory to God, it's going to be more than what you can handle. Guess what? It was designed to be that way, more than what you can handle so that you you can continue to give because as you continue to give, you're going to what? Continue to receive. Amen. Come and look at somebody and tell them it's all about reciprocity. It's all about reciprocity. As long as you continue to give, you're going to continue to receive. Thank you, baby. Hallelujah. So persist the faith. As I said today, I just want to speak to your faith. Those of you watching live stream, I just want to really speak to your faith to build, to strengthen, encourage you in your faith. Because just like this woman who had the issue of blood, the woman whose daughter was grievously vexed, uh, vexed with the devil, and just like Jairus' daughter who was dead and raised from the dead, they all had persistent faith. They would not quit. They wouldn't give up. They had buoyancy. They had resilience. They would not quit. 
one day I got to get back up here and preach about bulldog faith. They had bulldog faith. How many know what a bulldog does when he locks his jaws into something? Sometimes you have to kill them just to get them, you know, loose. Because once they lock their jaws, am I right, Chris? It's a wrap. <laughs> Glory to God. But see, that's the way your faith has to be. When you read and study and search the word of God and find his promises for your life, you got to lock your faith into that thing. And I don't care what I see. I'm not letting go of what God said. Bulldog faith. Come on, tell somebody your faith has got to be like a bulldog. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. And just, uh, again, want to encourage you and say God bless you. Uh, at this time, we're preparing ourselves for a holy communion. We want to pray, uh, however. Uh, but also, as we're praying, we want to encourage you to prepare yourselves for communion. But we also want to encourage you, as God speaks to your heart, to please uh, help us and sow into this ministry. For this is good ground. Glory to God. And uh, I want you to go to the Evangel Christian Church's website. In that upper right-hand corner, you push that button, it will scroll down to the donate button. And when you hit it, it will show you the ways that you can donate uh, to give. And that even gives uh, uh, an opportunity to... Uh, write in words, EMI, so it can indicate that your gift is for the EMI ministry. Uh, we appreciate so much your walk, your watching, your sticking with us, and uh, your, your prayerful support of this ministry. God bless every one of you. Hallelujah. Uh, so let's pray. Father, we thank you and give you praise for your word today. I thank you for your people that are here today in the sanctuary and that are watching live stream. I thank you, Father, for their faith. And I pray, Father, that you continue to bless them and build their faith as they continue to trust in you, to be consistent with what they believe in you. Lord, have your way in all of our lives. Continue to bless our homes and families and business and jobs and ministries in the name of Jesus. We speak life over them today, Lord God, and speak the blessing of the Lord that makes us rich and has no sorrow with it. But we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, as we prepare to uh, receive the Lord's Supper, the Bible says that the night in the, the book which the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. Father, thank you for the spread that resembles your broken body. And we thank you that even as your body was stripped, hallelujah, as you were beaten, uh, Father God, as horrible as it seems, it provided healing for every sickness and disease known to man. So we therefore give thanks. And he broke it and told him, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup and he gave thanks. Father, we thank you for this cup that represents uh, your shed blood and even, Lord God, the blood of the covenant. Thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that your blood ratified or made good the covenant where every promise belongs to us because we are yours and we give you thanks for it. And after giving thanks, he told them to drink ye all of it. For as often as you eat this bread, and you drink this cup, you do so forth the Lord's death till he comes. God bless you again today. We thank God so much for you and appreciate your watching. Uh, and please pray for us, Evangel Ministries International. Once again, uh, we thank God for our pastor, Dr. Cheryl Piscopo. And God bless her, giving us this opportunity. Yeah. We thank the Lord for you and uh, just pray that God continues to bless you and your families. We love you to life you. as I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. There you go, guys. That was Pastor Lance and Ornessa Travis's message on this week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. Let's get into our next song. And the song I chose for our next one is The Lord, My Shining Light Live by Dudley Smith. Enjoy The Lord, My Shining Light. I wrote a song the other day out of Psalms 27 that expresses who God is to me. My shining light, my salvation, my stronghold, my strength, my blessed hiding place. I have made a proclamation then to stay in his presence 
feel his warm embrace and sing holy praises unto him. So join with me as I continue to worship God.
There you go, guys. There the was the Lord, my shining light live by none other than my guest on the show, Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. We got three more songs. We're going to play three. We're going to pray. We're going to play two. We're going to pray. Then we're going to play the last one in the show that way. Our next song is We Declare War by none other than Dr. Tom Ray from his album, Evangel Live. Enjoy We Declare War. We Declare War.
any soldiers here tonight? Do we have any soldiers here tonight? God's got an army that's not afraid to fight. We rise up in his strength. There you go, guys. That was We Declare War by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. And let's get into our next song. Then we'll pray. Then we'll end the show in the last. Our next song is It Is Time by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy It Is Time. and praise we sing. It's time to lift him up. 
There you go, guys. That was It's Time. I think it should have been called We Give Him Our Praise. Because it says, We give Him our praise. Oh, we owe. Because everything in there says, you know, about giving Him praise. But they already got a song called Give Him Praise, anyways. So. I like the song. It's a great song, and I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that as much as I did. So let's pray. Lord, we humbly come back before you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, that you are God and God alone. And that you are having your way in this ministry and in this podcast. And Lord, I want to pray right now for somebody that you put on me and my wife's heart. Because, Lord, I can't say a lot. You already know who this person is. I will say this, though, guys, his name is Chris. And, Lord, you put him on our hearts. And you you have big plans in his life that only can happen if he does what? Remember Lot's wife. Because, Lord, as, you, as, as, I was going, as I'm going to put into an email, that from this day forward, Lord, it includes all of us, guys, from this day forward, this is our new life. We don't look back. We don't look at, back at what used to be, what will be, no, what used to be and what would have been because that's not who we are anymore. When we become believers in Christ, we become new creatures. The old things have passed. What we used to do or what we were going to do have all passed away. But behold, all things that we do now become new. And that includes good things, too. There's been opportunities through this podcast that I totally missed out on that I could have been part of, and big things could have happened. But being that, number one, I and the wife both were disobedient at the time, we missed out on certain things. So does that mean that we dwell on what that used to be, what that could have done for us? No. Even though, yes, it would have been good and would have strived us to where we are today, but then we still don't, we still remember Lot's wife. We don't dwell on that. And plus, the Lord didn't want us to be where we're at now, right then and there. We couldn't handle it then. So, help him to remember Lot's wife, Lord, so that he don't look back at what used to be or what would have been. But he looks to the future, Lord, of what will be and what can be. The Bible says through Christ Jesus, it says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. 
So, Lord, I, I pray a blessing over him, Lord. I pray a hedge of protection, your hand over him. And I pray, Lord, that you guide him in all truth. And Lord, I don't like the fact that he's going through self-help classes. But, Lord, you show him what he needs to do. You guide him in all truth. And you guide him to the right the right places to be so he can learn about you. And not all about, I am fixing my problems. When you're the only one who does, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for him. I thank you for his existence, for his presence. And I pray, Lord, that you just keep your love surrounding him. And remind him every day, Lord, that you love him no matter what. And that as long as he comes to you, which he will, and he is, slowly but surely, that you love him and will honor him to the day he goes to be with you, Lord. We thank you, we praise you, and honor you for this man. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Lord, I pray that you that you bless everyone at the sound of my voice who is listening now or will be listening in the future. I pray that you bless them, give them their heart's desires, as long as they not be, what, selfish. And Lord, I ask you to heal them from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, from cancer, diabetes, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. You heal my mom's arm that's not frozen no more. Heal my sister's heart and her diabetes that's not bad no more. And heal them, Lord, from diseases that contracted themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, why? When you heal them, Lord, it shows your mercy, your power, and your grace. I'm reminded of a scripture, Lord, it says you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door because you're all spirit. Then, Mo, you passed right straight through the door. And you said, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger in my side and see that I'm God. And what did Thomas do? He got on his knees and said, truly, you are the son of God. What did God, what did you say, Jesus? He said, blessed are those who have seen and believed. But it doesn't stop there. It says, blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. So show them now, Lord, so when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say, I have to see it to believe it. Because your word says, if you did it then, you'll do it again. Your word says you're the same God yesterday. No. It says you're the same God yesterday and today. No. It says you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So show them now, Lord, so when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say, I have to see it to believe it, because they'll say, if you did it then, you'll do it again. So, Lord, show them now, so when they come back needing absolutely anything, that includes Chris, Lord, show him now, too, so when they come back needing absolutely, when he comes back needing absolutely anything, you won't have to say, I have to see it to believe, because he'll say, if I've seen it then, I'll see it again, because your word again, Lord, says you're the same God yesterday, today and forever. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Boom, 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 boom. Amen, boom, boom, boom. Amen, amen, amen. Let's get into our last song, and our last song is Children of the Lord Shine On by none other than my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Enjoy, Children of the Lord Shine On.
your double-edged sword Will you be one of the lightning army One of the mighty children of the There you go, guys. That once again was of was Children of the Lord Shine On by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Let's 
end the show like we always do. Two things I want to remind you of. Number one, download that app. Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L, available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. Again, you can do all those wonderful, fabulous things on that app. Also, ask your Alexa device, say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal, and she'll say, welcome to, or welcome back to Podcast Portal, where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. We also got that skill for your video Alexa devices as well. So again, guys, say to your Alexa device, say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she say, welcome to, or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our announcements for today. Well, that's not really our announcements, but hey, I guess I was losing my train of thought today. <laughs> But that does conclude our message, our show for today. Well, as always, this is TGIF reminding you to, one, trust in the Lord in all your ways, two, lean not to your own understandings, and three, in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Thank you, and good night.